So out of curiosity, I wanted to figure out how the hertz or the frequency measurement mode on this Fluke 111 meter works, how well it performs, what its limits are. I do have a Regol oscilloscope, which of course is a much more robust, I mean it, it can measure such higher frequencies or you would assume it can. It says 100 megahertz. Um, I've never been able to actually test that it can um, measure up to 100 megahertz because so few divide, like in my daily electronic stuff I don't come across. I'm usually nowhere near working with devices in the 100 kilohertz range. Anyway, um, I have the fluke meter hooked up to the frequency generator, which um, I'll be setting it to basically what the procedure will be start at one kilohertz and then work your way up until you hit the max. I already determined that it was 100 kilohertz, but there's several modes on here and they're not all the same. So first I'm actually going to start in um, hertz, I'll start where it's at right now, hertz AC, the little squiggly line above it means you can use this setting to measure either voltage, AC voltage, or uh, if you hit the hertz button you switch to the alternate mode, uh, which is measuring frequency. And as you can see right now, uh, with the in square wave mode, so I'll put in a square wave, and one kilohertz or 1000 hertz frequency, the meter is pretty much locking onto that, 999.8, that's within like 0 0.2 maybe percent, which is, that's plenty good enough. Uh, we're just gonna crank the frequency up the data sheet said that the range was 5 hertz to 50. So we should expect that as we get close to 50 or exceed it, that it will um, error out. But actually it doesn't. It's allowing us to go higher in frequency. So we're just going to keep going until it does give us an error or the numbers start to go crazy or something. Okay, we hit it back down just a little bit and we're stopped at 100 kilohertz so it might be a slightly different model than the data sheet you know that we found so let's now see if we go to a different type of waveform so this was a square wave and if I hooked my oscilloscope up to the same so we can actually measure the same frequency or measure the same um, signal coming from the signal generator, we can watch. Let me just zoom out here a bit. So that's a nice looking square wave. That's what the fluke meter is trying to figure out the frequency of. And we verify with our scope that it's 100 kilohertz. Now I'm gonna to switch to a sine wave mode, which is more representative of AC voltage. I was actually somewhat surprised that a square wave worked on the AC mode. Anyway, we're still at 100 kilohertz. So hopefully you can follow what I'm doing here. Just kind of checking each mode, what its limits are. So a square wave in AC hertz is 100 kilohertz. Now a sine wave in AC hertz mode. Let's try to take it higher and it won't take it. So that pretty much means that whenever you have the meter in this setting, the voltage with a squiggle or AC mode and in hertz, you're not gonna measure anything faster than 100,000 hertz. All right, let's try the, the DC mode now. Honestly, I was expecting DC to perform better with digital waveforms like a square wave than the AC. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to knock this thing back down to 1 kilohertz. And now my meter, it's reading voltage still. I have to hit the hertz button. And there we have our DC um, hertz. We'll put this back into square wave mode. 
start cranking up the frequency. We've made it to 20. 30. Still looking good. Stopping every now and then to compare. 39.8. Slight deviation from 40. So that's a... Uh, I think that's a 2% deviation. We go to 41, and it's now at 40.5. So we're starting to see more error. Here's 42, and 19.5, 22. It's starting to actually jump around. So at this point, the number, the reading is completely garbage. Um, and it's still doing that at 42. I gotta come back down to 40. So surprisingly, the frequency is limited in the DC Hertz mode to 40 kilohertz, while in AC it can measure accurately all the way up to 100, and that's whether you're doing a square wave or a sine wave. And just for fun, let's put the put a sine wave in and see what it does. It says zero. That's odd. So we'll see, maybe we got to take it down until it starts giving us readings again. I should probably start at 1 kilohertz, but... Alright, here's 10 kilohertz sine wave on voltage uh, or hertz, the DC setting, which is probably not what it's intended for, right? Because a sine wave is not a DC signal. It's 15. Still holding 20. 25. 30. Oh, it's going a bit crazy. 30, that's not even 31, that's 30.2. So it's really only usable up to almost 30 kilohertz. So, and this is something that's probably going to be different for every meter, and so um, you, the one you have might be different, right? And hopefully they have a data sheet for it, and maybe you won't ever be working in the limits of the... Well, you probably will. Who knows? So this is a craftsman meter, and what I want to do is just go through very quickly the same test procedure that I did with the Fluke, and I'll be expecting that the Fluke outperforms, because obviously it costs more. Let me get out of this tangled mess. Okay. And this one actually does not, unlike the Fluke, instead of having a Hertz button for the volts DC and the volts AC, there's only a single frequency setting, which in my opinion makes more sense. I think it's somewhat confusing to have a different AC Hertz or DC Hertz since, like, if it's a, never mind, you know. I was saying, I think that both a sine wave and a square wave, or almost any waveform that would you'd be measuring with a frequency, um, would be considered an alternating voltage, and not really DC anyway, so why you would call it Let's see, that's not what I meant to do. We got both meters. Or we have the signal generator going to both meters. Get the grounds hooked up. Start at one kilohertz. And is there anything else I have to do on here? I am not seeing a frequency out of this. And I'm not seeing a frequency on my oscilloscope either. So let me disconnect. Oh, I'm in the amp setting, so I'm probably shorting it. That was not good. And now it looks like it's not there, but it is. Actually, I'm just zoomed a bit. Let me zoom out. We got our sine wave there, 1,000 kilohertz. Um, Sure, well, let's test it. 
sine wave. We're going to take this up until it doesn't go anymore. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35, 40 kilohertz. 50. 60, let me slow down, make sure it's still 67, 66.98. Okay. 83.97, still pretty good. 100, oh, 100 kilohertz, we're at 0.3% error. This is actually allowing me to measure a frequency higher than the fluke did. We've lost a digit of precision now in order to make room for the 100th, 100th place. 120 being measured at 119.9. Keep going. 145. We're still very accurate. All right, hold up. Now it's zeroed out. We went too far, and we can just take it to 150. Okay. 150 f mm, 154. I'm going to have to call it 154 on this. That's very surprising. This meter has 50% more ability to measure frequency and, you know, I, in terms of accuracy, I think they're about the same. I didn't do a very scientific approach to measuring accuracy um, just because it seemed like it was within less than a percent. Um, which for a meter like this would be, I think, is sufficient for almost all use cases. I'm now going to switch to square wave and just see if it can handle that better for any reason. 153.9. Going to go up. It actually seems to um, be able to measure a square wave better than it can measure a sine wave. We may hit 200 here. So there's 200 kilohertz on a square wave. 225. 250. Okay, we hit something. It's going crazy. Back it down a bit. 265. It really should be 266. So we're right up at that limit. There it goes crazy. So I'd say the most useful, the highest useful frequency is probably around 260 kilohertz. All right. Well, that's probably about all I have time for. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.